Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. It's time for the next edition of Mail and Donations, November 2023. So this month I got a good number of uh, interesting things. As you can see, this is not uh, even all the packages. Uh, more are coming. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, quickly take a look at what I got uh, the last month. Let's start off with this little package. It was sent from the United Kingdom. Um, not really sure what it is. Probably something I ordered on uh, eBay. Declaration says electric uh, plug. Let's check it out. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, if you remember in my last video, I got this uh, parts for my dissolving station and uh, the glass tube was broken but otherwise uh, the parts were okay and I actually didn't need a glass tube but I sent him a message on eBay and uh, told him it was broken but uh, and he should consider his packaging but he excused and sent me a whole new kit uh, completely free so yeah that's really nice now I have some more spares that's a good customer service. Yeah, and the note here says, hope this has a safer journey. And uh, yeah, the total was actually 1868 UK pounds, but I didn't pay anything for this one. <laughs> and this one, uh, yeah, it came from Norway. And uh, yeah, I'm just amazed. It actually came from uh, John from Bergen. And uh, he was the one that sent me that uh, Amiga 6 and lots of stuff uh, last time including this Commodore security um, patch and uh, yeah he told me he was gonna send me two additional packages with some stuff um, yeah I'm really amazed <laughs> looking forward to opening this so let's see it says Nintendo at least <laughs> Okay, and here's more, yeah I think that was it. Alright, so what do we have here, yeah, look at that, it's a Nintendo Classic Mini <laughs> with 30 games installed and this is a wireless Nintendo Classic Mini controllers. What a great gift, thanks a lot. I mean, there's probably not much retro related stuff to do with this, except for playing games. But um, yeah, at least I'll try and hook it up and see if it uh, works. Yeah, that's the dongle and uh, probably the same there. Probably needs batteries. Yeah, same, it's a separate uh, wireless receiver dongle for both. Very nice. Yeah, the classic mini, it's the like the modern uh, micro or mini variant of uh, the classic Nintendo games console, of course. Yeah, comes with pre-installed games. I, I don't know if you can install more, uh, Probably you can. Uh, it has HDMI output. All right, uh, since I'm in the middle of opening here, I'll come back to this and test it uh, a little bit later in this video. So keep watching. Next one is this and it says ultrasonic cleaner uh, made in China. And uh, yeah, that's in fact what it is. I uh, ordered this on AliExpress. It was quite cheap, uh, cost like 50, 60 euros, including shipping. For a long time, I have been looking for a, yeah, kind of small and kind of inexpensive ultrasonic cleaner. I found this on AliExpress. Uh, I heard from other guys that has bought it before. Um, 
told that it was uh, quite good and uh, so I went ahead and got it. Only drawback, they again managed not to print the VOEC code on the packaging so I had to pay uh, tax and uh, additional charges here in Norway to receive the package. I went online to Aliexpress to complain and it was a long process and they sent me an email and I had to send all sorts of documentation and I have sent documentation but uh, I never heard anything about uh, that. So I considered those taxes paid double <laughs> and lost money for me but uh, that's how it is. Okay, I'm gonna open it and uh, yeah, maybe we can do a little test. Packaging is good. Yeah. Probably a copy product of some other kind of ultrasonic cleaner of better quality. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I don't know these types of devices that much. But it looks alright. It, uh, it's quite heavy and uh, yeah, it can take a uh, quite large parts actually not at all bad and here's a really big uh, user's manual <laughs> need to read that how to avoid electrical shock yeah yeah let's see what it says here ultrasonic cleaner model gps 08a capacity 1.3 liters supply voltage 200 to 240 volts frequency 40 kilowatts Ultrasonic power 60 watts and heating power 100 watts. It also mentions some UK and EU importers and I think actually this was sent from uh, uh, the Netherlands. So that's how it looks on the front. You can adjust uh, temperature and time and uh, on and off and has some warnings here not to use it before you add water and uh, yeah. Don't empty it before you turn off the power. And of course it's for cleaning small um, PCBs or uh, yeah, other stuff that's dirty and uh, you should save some time and it should be really clean with ultrasonic cleaning and some uh, kind of soap. I need to figure out what to use but you can of course use just water if you want. <laughs> you can of course use just water I think if you if it's not that dirty. All right, I need to test it right away. So here I have a little over 6 deciliter with water and a few drops of uh, uh, dishwashing soap. Now I need to find something to clean, but I think we can power it on to start warming the water. Okay, it has the power switch on the back, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, preset to 54 degrees and actual is 24 degrees, 10 minutes. So we can increase and decrease the temperature and the time. Go and start it. And on. Okay. <laughs> it's bubbling. Okay. It seems to be working just fine. Gonna try with this PCB here and I'm just gonna draw some uh, lines with a, a pen. See if it removes that. And also you can see it's a little uh, dark here, maybe that's burnt, I don't remember. We'll see what happens. So it hasn't reached uh, temperature. Uh, I'm not gonna wait until that. Just gonna test this now. But of course, uh, higher temperature will yeah, make it easier to remove fat and yes, oils and stuff like that. Let's give it a couple of minutes. Uh, of course, I need to learn about this and how to use it properly. But uh, this is the first test. All right, so um, I need to obviously figure out what kind of uh, chemicals to use for cleaning and uh, what temperatures are best and stuff like that, how long time stuff needs. I guess that comes with experience and uh, 
Yeah, is it safe to put your hands down into the water? I can feel the heat uh, a little bit now. It's gone up to 38 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna let it uh, stay there for uh, a couple of minutes at least. Okay, so it reached uh, 46 degrees now in uh, six minutes or I started it at nine, I don't remember, five minutes. Oh boy, it's quite noisy. But a lot of the noise comes from the lid. If we do like this, it's much more silent. <laughs> Maybe add a little uh, rubber seal or something around. The max temperature is 80 degrees Celsius and the max uh, time is 30 minutes. Yeah, and it reached uh, the temperature now. Uh, so that took um, more or less eight or nine minutes to reach uh, 59 degrees. But hey, I think that's enough. I'm gonna stop it. So this I will probably have down in my garage and not here in the lab because uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, cumbersome with uh, getting water and draining it again and um, the noise. Let's see the result. I mean, this card was quite clean, but uh, yeah, Let's see if we have any change. Uh, no, not much to see actually. This uh, brown here, I think it's just burnt when I because I have desoldered chips on this and the marker pen is still there but uh, I'm not really sure if, if it's supposed to clean off stuff like that uh, then I, I mean it would probably clean off other types of markings then but uh, I'll definitely try this on other stuff tools and things like that uh, I need to clean and if I have some very dirty PCBs or uh, chip I don't know if uh, it's advisable to clean chips, but um, we'll see. Anyway, nice to have at least the solder pads that were a little bit dirty of uh, old flux and solder. Very clean now. All right, let's push on. Uh, let's take a look at um, this big package here. Too big to fit my bench. Need to put it on the floor. <laughs> This is something I bought on the Norwegian fin.no and uh, yeah, it's something retro. Not very well packaged for uh, the thing it uh, contains. Hopefully it survived. And there you have it. It's a CRT television and there's no padding or anything on the sides. That's uh, very bad packaging. I'll be lucky if this is not damaged. Well, it looks to be in one piece and that's the remote control. Even got batteries. Yeah, it's a United 14 inch CRT color TV. And the reason I bought it very cheaply was because I don't have one. And sometimes I need to test some computers. That doesn't work very well on my LCD TV, so uh, this can be handy for those situations. Let's check the back. And it has a SCART connector, so you can plug in various things into that. But luckily it's not damaged on the outside. We'll see if it works. <laughs> the inside works. Yeah, I turn it on and I can hear the the high voltage, yes, and it uh, produces uh, static, the background radiation. Let's see if it has any menu or anything. No text. Yeah, so it seems to be working, but uh, doesn't seem to have any... Yeah, there's the AV video mode. Doesn't seem to have any menu or uh, anything where you can adjust. Yeah, of course you can adjust stuff like this. Color and uh, brightness. Yeah, seems to be working fine. I'll clean it up a little bit later, but uh, I'm not gonna hook up a real computer or anything like that. Um, yeah, there's enough stuff here already today. <laughs> nice, look, it survived. 
Next up is this big box and uh, yeah, this is in fact also from uh, John from uh, Bergen in Norway. So just need to say thank you again and uh, say hello to all my viewers in Bergen, if there are any. <laughs> the package has a familiar shape. Okay, it says Commodore 64 through the plastic. Wow! I now have packaging material boxes and bubble wrap plastic for life. Wow, look at that! A boxed Commodore 64 microcomputer. So nice! <laughs> As you know, I have several of these. I uh, only think I actually got one um, boxed C64. So this is a nice addition to my collection, but um, I'm not sure if it works and what the condition is uh, inside. We have to take a look. Opening. Okay, it's a Commodore, yes, but uh, no keyboard. <laughs> so, and it got the user's manual. Yeah, so that can, of course, be a useful parts machine or it can be fitted with the necessary parts to be completed, obviously. Still gonna hook it up. Looks like um, nothing is missing. Yeah, some stuff have, has been done with this machine. There are some heat sinks and uh, yeah, obviously the keyboard missing. Uh, Probably got broken a couple of the clips in the back, yeah, loose in the back but not in the front. It's missing the side panel here, except for that it looks alright. I'm gonna hook it up, see if it actually powers on. Let's see, is it dead? No, it works. <laughs> Very nice. Cool. Obviously, I can't test it without the keyboard. I have a spare keyboard, in fact, so I could uh, just complete this machine by fixing it up. I think that actually going to happen in another video. Maybe run some diagnostics and stuff like that, do a real uh, Commodore 64 restoration video. Yeah, you can never have enough Commodore 64s, can you? Anyway, that was very nice and thanks a lot again, John. I mentioned it in the previous mail and donations video, but John is well known for back in the day with the Amiga and Commodore 64 communities. Uh, yeah, demos and stuff like that. And he was in fact a member of Crypto Burners and he still runs a big archive of uh, retro computer stuff still. And you can visit his archive at uh, Crypto Burners. All right, I promise you a look at the Nintendo and here it is unpanked and it actually looks uh, brand new in box. Um, just gonna do a quick test. This little console emulator came uh, back in 2016 and uh, yeah, looks fairly nice. It's very small form factor. It has HDMI output and uh, DC in and two controller inputs. It, uh, only came with the one original uh, cabled uh, controller but as you see I got two wireless there I don't know if these are Nintendo or um, some third-party aftermarket uh, brands yeah and obviously it worked I put some batteries in one of the controllers not sure how you uh, pair it or something but uh, doesn't seem to work right out of the box it's this way around. Actually blinks. So maybe this is um, the wrong one. Yeah, now it stopped blinking. Yes. Works right away. I'm not gonna play anything. I am not uh, playing much video games nowadays. Uh, I simply don't have time. There's a great deal of games here. Atari games. Battle Zone. I mean, uh, 
is this console modified or something? Uh, only supposed to have 30 games pre-installed. Well, I don't know too much about this console. <laughs> Retro Arc, yeah, I suppose it is modified in some way. Anyway, that was a quick look at that. Nice to have. I'll check it out um, later on my own, see if it contains any cool games. I might play a little bit after all. Next up is this one, and this came all the way from the Netherlands. Uh, and this came from uh, the retro 8-bit shop. So um, if you are in need for some uh, retro 8-bit computer parts, then check out the, the retro 8-bit shop. And it is something I need for my Commodore 128D. Perhaps you saw the video where I am uh, starting building up a Commodore 128D from uh, various parts. This is one of the parts I need and it's quite an essential part. So let's take a look inside. You probably already guessed what it is. Yeah, and there's some uh, <laughs> material and a package of chewing gums from uh, the retro 8-bit shop. What's on this card? Well, there's a measure there and there's some easter eggs and puzzle fun. C64 easter egg, a Commodore 64 cheat sheet, a Sudoku and some MSX DOS 1 easter egg, Rebus. <laughs> okay, so visit retro8bitshop.com. Okay, let me reveal the item. Yes, it's a keyboard for the Commodore 128D. And uh, as you probably can see already, it's uh, quite yellowed. So uh, that will need some retro biting for sure. Wow, look at that yellowing. <laughs> Some of the keys are not that yellowed, but uh, this is extreme. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at the backside and it's totally different there. Uh, I'm not uh, sponsored or anything, but um, just to be uh, transparent here, I got free shipping on this. However, the actual keyboard was very expensive. Um, I found a couple on eBay that was uh, nearly as expensive, but they had some stuff missing, either keycaps or had some fault, this should be in perfectly good condition by the sound of the keys. It seems to be working very nicely and it's very clean. I can't see anything, uh, any dirt or anything between the keys. Keys are uh, clean, a couple of black spots here and there. So I will definitely um, do some uh, retro brighting on this and uh, yeah, see if I need to clean it further then this will be good for my Commodore 128D. And the price for this, I'm not gonna reveal it. Uh, I paid uh, more than a boxed complete working order Commodore 64. I'm sure uh, you can check the prices on eBay. They are, uh, yeah, let's call it amazing. <laughs> Just to compare with the same keyboard that is not yellowed. <laughs> wow. All right, close to the end now. This is the final package this month. And uh, again, this is from uh, our friend John from Bergen in Norway. <laughs> I'm simply amazed of all the stuff he sends me. And uh, yeah, this is the third one this month. Now I did pay for shipping for um, two of uh, the packages from John because I think it was too bad he had to pay for shipping and send me free stuff. I think this one is a real goodie bag. Lots of small things. Yeah, and one big. So let's take a look. I'm gonna open the smaller one first. I kind of know what this is, uh, at least a big one, but um, not really sure the rest. 
Okay, here we have uh, Jiffy DOS for week 20. Okay, cool. I don't have Jiffy DOS for uh, the week 20. So I have for uh, Commodore 128 and uh, C64. And this is Amiga, not A1000, yeah. Serial plus parallel loop back tester. All right, that's cool. You know, uh, when you use the Amiga test kit, uh, there's uh, some tests there that I can never run because uh, it needs uh, loopback adapters and I don't have that. So that's pretty nifty to have. Now I can test uh, those as well. Nice. Okay, what's this then? Uh, it's an OLED uh, 1.3 inch display. Go X Centurion. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, I know what the OLED display is, but um, the Go X Centurion, I'm not really familiar with that. And then this one. The packaging is as usual excellent. Okay, what do we have here? A1200 CM4 adapter for the PyStorm 32 Lite. Okay, cool. I have a PyStorm for uh, the Amiga 500, but uh, not for the 1200. So is that what this is? A PyStorm for uh, the 1200? I mean, you need a Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, looks like that. Cool. Very nice. Okay, this one I'm gonna test in another video sometime later. Excellent. Now this is the big one. Um, yeah, just gonna open it. Of course. <laughs> and this too is something for uh, the Amiga. Oh, look at that. It's an A590 hard drive. A590, A690, no hard drive disk, prepared for Sulu SCSI. Status? Question mark. So, yeah, that means I have to figure out myself if this is working. Insert a hard drive and see if I can get it uh, up and running. So that's very cool. This one, of course, goes with the Amiga 500s. It's the shape of the 500s, as you can see. Okay, that was a lot of stuff in this video and I really appreciate uh, the donations. And uh, yeah, that really helps me drive this channel because I constantly need uh, stuff for uh, <laughs> new videos, new material. So if you wanna help out with this channel, I'll happy to accept uh, donations if you want to send me something just uh, give me a message first and uh, i'll arrange for it so hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you next time in my next video and uh, thanks a lot for subscribing and liking and a special thank you to my patreons see you next time bye bye